Welcome back inside the lab, everybody, for a big Thursday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, talking about a team that we haven't talked about that we really need to. It's a Boston Bruins special with a special guest. Let's get right to it. Thursday episode, baby. Let's ride. You're Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You heard the music, and you know what time it is. It's time for the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast with Steel and Flip. This Thursday episode, people, is going to be one focused on a team that has torn up the NHL this season. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We are going to get to big-time bet steel. You know we have to because, actually, this board for Thursday night is one that I'm really loving. Ten <laughs> games, we're going to get there. But, honestly, the Boston Bruins have been doing special things this year at all ends of the ice, much to the chagrin of a bunch of different fan bases. Maybe the most important Toronto Maple Leafs near and dear to you and I. We're going to have a special guest, Ian McLaren, on for this breakdown steal because I think really it's time to give credit where credit's due yeah. to a team that is shaping up for – they want nothing less than a cup. That's clear. And they haven't made a move yet. And I know that's one of the things you want to talk to Ian about. A lot of eyes are on this Boston Bruins team because – doesn't it feel like they always go out there and get at least a piece? They really do. Yeah, you were, we're going to talk to Ian about this because I was going down the, the rabbit hole of trades and trade deadline acquisitions for the Boston Bruins the last five, six, even seven years, and they always seem to make a splash right before the trade deadline comes up. So we know they're in the mix. We know that they're looking at a defenseman. Ian McLaren has broke it down on the Locked On uh, Bruins podcast as well, so we're going to talk to him about that. A bunch of different questions, fantasy-wise, as well as just general standings in the NHL right now. The Bruins, top of the leaderboard, leading the NHL, already at 91 points on the season. Absolutely unfathomable what they've done so far at this point. Very true. And honestly, when you look at it, and again, we're going to break it down with Ian in about 10 seconds, but they seem to just be getting it done at every Pete, like every position, every angle, like I, I tried to poke a hole in what the Bruins are doing this year. Steel, I can't do it. <laughs> That's luck. why we have the expert on from the Locked On Bruins podcast, Mister Ian McLaren, former senior writer at the Score and Bruins aficionado. Let's get right to it. Thank you for staying locked in for today's special episode. We are joined by the amazing Ian McLaren, host of the Locked On Bruins. Make sure you go subscribe. Check out all of his channels and platforms. YouTube channel, Locked On Bruins. You can find him on Twitter at Locked NHL Bruins and Ian C. McLaren. Again, thank you so much, Ian, for taking the time to join us for today's episode. Like Flip said off air, we don't really get the chance to talk about the Boston Bruins as much and the Toronto Maple Leafs at the same time. Flip and I are locked and loaded with the Boston Bruin questions. You are the guy to go to when it comes to Boston Bruins. And obviously, with uh, with nine days away from the uh, NHL trade deadline, I know you were talking about it earlier on today's mm -hmm. episode of the Locked On Bruins, but... Look, the, to me, the Bruins are one of those notorious teams for always being well known to make a splash at the deadline. We can talk, mm -hmm. we can look at the last couple of years Hampus Lindholm, uh, Taylor Hall, and Mike Riley, even a few years mm -hmm. back, Rick Nash in 2018. Uh, I know you've been talking about Vladislav Gavrikov. Is he the Bruins' number one target for this trade and only target that you see the Bruins making this uh, NHL trade deadline? I mean, it seems like he's the target. I, I certainly hope he's not the only target, uh, possibly. And the thing with Gavrikov is he seems like a fine player. Nice guy from all accounts. Could be a good addition to the Bruins, although I have some questions about where he would slot in. Uh, their top six right now is just one, when healthy. They're, yeah. They were playing as good as any – or even better than any – Defensive unit around the NHL, allowing yep. only 2.05 goals per game. A lot of that is Lena Solmark, Jeremy Swayman, but still. Uh, my issue is more the reported 
asking price from Columbus's point of view. For me, if you're willing to give up a first round pick, then I just say put all your put all your chips out there, make it a bigger deal, and take a bigger swing at a more impactful player. I know, I mean, Jacob Chikrin would be a dream uh, acquisition. He's under contract for a couple more years at a very team friendly deal. It would take a lot more than the first round pick, obviously, to acquire him. But mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah, if you're going to spend your first round pick in 2023, ideally it's a 32nd overall pick, but still, um, (laughs) I'd like to invest that in someone of a bit more substance. It's not really even addressing a need. The Bruins are pretty deep on the left side, not very deep on the right side, forward and defensively. So that's where I would, uh, that's where I would focus on at the moment if I was Don Sweeney. I think what's the most impressive, Ian, is the Boston Bruins have put themselves in a position of obvious advantage. When you score the second most goals in the league and allow the least goals in the league, (laughs) I think your front office is very comfortable going out Mm -hmm. there and investing in an opportunity to win the Stanley Cup right Mm -hmm. now. Not in a couple of years, not thinking about, oh, how do we do it in a couple – It's right now, baby, because this team is obviously the toast of the NHL Mm -hmm. and they're going to be making these additions. And I think what I need to ask you is, after what the Toronto Maple Leafs have done, they've sent a message to the Boston Bruins. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Hey, I'm not getting ahead of myself. They're going to have to get through the Tampa Bay Lightning and that is a tall task. Three straight cup trips for the Stanley Cup you know, very valuable team here. I'm not getting ahead of that. But you have said a lot on your show about the depth up the middle in Boston. And that's one of the needs that you've been hoping they've addressed over the last, you know, what, year and a half, season, season or two. Do you think now what the Toronto Maple Leafs have going on, the Boston Bruins have to take notice. How do you think they respond? They got to be also going for a forward, I think, a centerman at least. I would assume so. Yes. I mean, yeah, last year, obviously there, the whole uh, huge storyline all year long was how do you fill the hole left by David Krejci when he decided to go home and play in Czechia? They were hashtag blessed this season to have that hole filled by David Krejci himself. Uh, They were able to flip Eric Howla for Pavel Zaka, who was drafted as a center. He can't play down the middle in a pinch. Uh, for the time being, he's on the, the wing playing with David Krejci and David Postrock. Uh Charlie Coyle, perhaps a bit overpaid for a third-line center, but, I mean, to have Taylor Hall on the third line with him, that's a luxury for, for a team like uh, – or for any team, really, to have Taylor Hall on your third line. Yeah. The fourth line, uh, they could use – I mean, I had kind of been – Not hoping, but, I mean, a guy like Jonathan Taves, if he had been available, Mm. plug him in as the fourth-line center, like, you're laughing, right? But Yeah, playing the parade. uh, Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Even Ryan O'Reilly would have been an amazing addition for the Boston Bruins. I'm not really sure um, what they're going to do. All the the talk right now is left-hand defenseman, which I still don't really understand. Yeah. Um, a, A forward... Probably they'd be looking more for like a scoring winger. They're going to have to make some some room cap-wise. And that probably means a guy like Craig Smith will be on the way out. You got to right, fill right. that hole on the third line. Uh, so I'm thinking more a guy like Ivan Barbashev would be ideal. Mm, they might look to Chicago. One. Max Domi could yes. be a good fit. Yes. Um, that kind of th- those kind of additions, I think. Yeah, and I think just this move by the Toronto Maple Leafs puts the impetus back on these teams in the Atlantic Division. Mm-hmm. Does it mean they're going to make a huge splash in the playoffs and you know just run away with it? Of course not. But you know those teams in the Atlantic have to take notice. Look at 100%. what it's already done for the fantasy pieces around the teams that have made the move. Steals made the points about the New York Islanders and Bo Horvat. Of course, yeah. Barzal's injury is another factor. But any player that the Bruins go out and get they're slotting in there with some elite talent they're in positions to succeed that's one of the reasons why we had ian on today's episode because we're gonna ask him some more fantasy specific questions around the break 
any player that the Bruins go out and get right now, down the stretch, they're going to be great fantasy options. They're going to score goals. They're not going to be plus minus liabilities because of how stingy this team is on the back end. We're going to get the big time bets at the end of the episode, but I have to hit you with our friends from FanDuel. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers get a new sweat. No sweat first bet for $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't hit. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And they let you bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes drained. You know, Steele and I love him. Bet on that first to 20 or the tip or who scores the first points. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. Don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet for $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are free and available on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. So make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Thank you for staying locked in for today's special episode. Again, joined by Ian McLaren, host of the Locked On Bruins. Ian, you know, you make that comment, hashtag blessed uh, for the Bruins. <laughs> Having David Krejci back, and obviously, yeah. yeah, it's been a it's been a huge addition to their lineup. A couple of different changes from last year. The player I want to specifically talk about, you know, just general as well as fantasy wise, is Jake DeBrusque and the value mm. that he brings for the future of this Bruins team. Because, like you alluded to, Krejci when he went back home to Czechia, now he's back. He's thirty seven years old. Bergeron's thirty seven years old. Marshan's thirty five. On the forward side of things, it's a little bit of an older team. But, of course, mm -hmm. you've got David Pasternak, Charlie McAvoy, a couple of young guys to kind of keep the the mojo moving forward for the Bruins and the organization. But Jake DeBrus being one of those guys, obviously requested a trade a few years back. Now he seems like he's loving playing in yeah. Boston. What type <laughs> yeah. of what type of ceiling can we see from Jake DeBrus? Because <laughs> when I'm looking at it right now, even with the injury he had this year, he's having a little bit of a career year, 33 mm -hmm. points in 38 games. Yeah, I mean, ever since uh, former head coach Bruce Cassidy decided to put him on uh, the top line with Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, uh, he's exploded. And, I mean, rightfully so, playing with those two guys, uh, having a career year, he missed like 17 games yeah. after scoring a couple goals during the Winter Classic, came back, he has scored the first uh, goal in – each of the two games that he's played uh, since his return and really helped reinvigorate the power play, which was yeah. struggling uh, in his absence. Now looking at his ceiling per se, it's really hard to say. Obviously he has that plum line assignment right now. Uh, there's yeah. questions uh, maybe short to long-term in Boston about who those centers will be as early as next year. You know, if, Best case, Bruins win the cup. You could see um, Bergeron, Krejci maybe hanging them up. Then who who steps into that role? Is Jake DeBrusque a, a driver on that line? Can he produce regardless of who his line mates are? Or does he need you know that elite talent on yeah. his line to really produce? So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what he's able to do kind of on his own without those kind of safety nets there. But um, I mean, he's got all the confidence in the world right now. He's loving life on and off the <laughs> ice, which is a big change from the past couple of years. Like yeah. players have been really open about some players anyways, about struggling mentally through COVID. He was a guy who really uh, was affected by being isolated um, and didn't necessarily jive with Cassidy. Yeah. Um, so he's loving life under Jim Montgomery. And I mean, I think it's reasonable to suggest he's, uh, you know, he could hit at least 25 on any given season moving forward. One of the things that I looked at this team and Hey, 
I'm going to come on here, and I know you like this, as someone who has worked beside me in the war room watching too many Bruins Leafs games. I was wrong about this Bruins team this year. I need to be honest about it. I saw Cassidy going. I thought this team was going to regress a little bit, at least Mm -hmm. defensively, and they've almost improved. And now they're just the best penalty-killing team in the league, allowing the least goals like seriously hats off to what they've been able to do. And I think a lot Mm -hmm. of it comes down to, in my opinion, I don't think you can argue this, the best goaltending tandem in the league this year, right there in Swayman and Olmark. Mm -hmm. And I'll just throw you with a little bit of a curveball question before I hit you with my last question, which is, you know, fantasy related. I look at what you guys have. And when I say you guys, the Boston Bruins franchise in terms of draft picks, Mm -hmm. prospects and moving forward, I feel like the prospect pool, and this isn't like my own take, this is just a fact, (laughs) isn't exactly stocked because of everything that's gone on over the last couple of years and the prolonged success of this franchise, including a Stanley Cup a number of years ago. They might have to part with one of these goaltenders at some point (laughs) in the near future, Ian, (laughs) if things don't go to plan. And I just wanted to put you on the hot seat because I know Linus Allmark has been the guy this year. But yeah. I really like Jeremy Swayman. Mm-hmm. What's the goaltender that you go with for the rest of, you know, I just need to ask a goaltending question because yeah. a lot of our listeners out there pay a lot of attention to goaltenders. And I could see Jeremy Swayman going somewhere and mm-hmm. be an absolute number one stud. What's yeah. your take on the goaltending situation moving forward? I mean, personally speaking, I have Jeremy Swayman on my two keeper teams and Thank you. invested in his you. Uh, long-term success oh so you One like this question i do it makes me a bit nervous thinking about how good Allmark <laughs> has been uh one of the leagues i have him in is in a salary cap league he's a Ooh. rfa this coming summer right and they're getting this performance from Allmark. he's making only five million dollars which is insane and let's say swayman comes in at like four 4.5 or something like that you still have one of if not the best goaltending tandem making less than sergey Bobrovsky in florida like as right. a duo yeah. right yeah, good point so i think this is probably a question more for when swayman is going to be ufa uh, cool. eligible he's gonna have i'm assuming assuming that they can he's not going to hold out and be like he wants his big deal now if they can get him signed for like two three years at a reasonable rate and then once Olmark comes off the books they will likely invest heavily in Swayman his next deal I would imagine if his trajectory continues um would be monster so I look at you know Spencer Knight say in Florida who highly touted a bit slower rise at the moment i i have him on a, a keeper team as well not quite re- as reliable i think i think he was actually just sent to the minors today Woo. um uh he's making something like 4.25 starting next season for the next couple i i would hope that swayman can get signed to that although he has outperformed a guy like spencer knight um but to make it <laughs> a bit more clear, I think <laughs> I hope that they keep this tandem together for a couple more years at least. Yes, it's tempting to flip Swayman maybe for a top line center, you but get a lot, goaltending think, is just so Swayman. important. And yeah, yeah, yeah. If they can That's have those guys locked down, question. yeah, if they can have them locked down for a pretty reasonable total between the two of them, mm-hmm. I don't think you can. I don't think you can trade either of those guys. Yeah, it's it's just not happening. I don't think. I agree. Yeah, Steel. yeah. Gold goaltending situation is so important fantasy yeah. wise. Flip and I both know that. I think yeah, like both in the in the fantasy league that we're both in. Uh, I, I think Linus Allmark and Jeremy Sw- Swayman slid pretty far down in in, yeah. in the fantasy ranking. So whoever snagged them up uh, yeah. at that yeah. later rounds, so, uh, definitely appreciating it. And like Flip mm-hmm. uh, said earlier in the episode, obviously. 
Flip and I were completely wrong on our take of the Boston Bruins this upcoming season. They have been. <laughs> Hasn't the been the first time. Ever. Ian knows that. <laughs> Not the first yeah, time. the first no. time for me. Probably, I've, heard some, probably, I've heard some questionable yeah. flip takes in my day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It probably hey, won't this is be what the last happens take when you pop off at the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely won't be the last take either. But, you know, looking at the standings right now, obviously mm. the Bruins at the top of the Atlantic Division. For me, I know there's like 20 to 25 games left for teams mm. out there, but the, 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 the division and the playoff race is kind of concrete for the mm. second and third teams in those division. Leafs yep. are playing Lightning. It looks like the Devils will be playing the Rangers. I don't think the Boston Bruins are scared to play anyone in the first round, but if you had to choose what team would be the least likely team that you want to see in the first round of the playoffs for the teams that are battling for a wild card spot. Good question. That's a very good question. Yeah. Before last night, I might've said Buffalo, but they were pretty decimated (laughs) by if the thing about the Sabres is they have like, 18 million dollars in cap space if they wanted yeah. to do something while cousins and thompson are on lesser deals before their bigger deals kick in if they had a goalie if they do something big they could be a, a team to be reckoned with uh yeah. but um and plus there's the whole rivalry there i mean i'm not too worried about pittsburgh not too worried about washington uh the islanders maybe if barzell's Healthy. I always again go back to goaltending. Which yeah. of those teams has the best goalie? You got to go with the Islanders. Ilya Sorokin. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> they have beaten the Bruins in the past in the in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Then the recent past. Uh, so if they were able to squeak in, I'd probably be most concerned uh, about them. The Senators have played Bruins pretty well this season. I don't think they're going to catch up. Um, but yeah, just basing it solely on how important goaltending is in the playoffs, I'd say the Islanders. Yeah, I sure. actually really like that answer. And <laughs> I think I would probably go with the same because given how good this Bruins team has been up and down, they're going into the playoffs confident. Mm-hmm. Whatever is going to happen after that, they're going in as the most confident team because they have literally taken care of business at all aspects of this game of hockey. Mm-hmm. And honestly, you're going to need a steal of a series by a goaltender, I think, to knock mm-hmm. this Bruins team off its trajectory, which is currently taking a deep run at the Cup this year. That's why we had to have Ian McLaren on, host of the Locked On Bruins podcast. Make sure you check out Ian on Twitter. Check out the Locked On Bruins podcast across YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you find our show as well. Ian, we're going to have you back on for sure, my friend. Please, Thank yes. you for joining us today and the rest of the season. If the Leafs and the Bruins go at it, you know <laughs> you and I are going to have to have a few conversations. Oh, so, for sure. Again, thank you for joining us today for today's episode. Thanks for having me, fellas. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Remember, we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform. So hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. Flip and I appreciate all the love, all the support. Our listeners show us every single day. We are so close to 800 subs, Flip. We're almost there. I can taste it. We're pushing. We'll get there very, very soon. But we got to get to big time bets where the money is made. I'm coming off a hot night. Three out of three. Yes. yes. I took the favorites. Made you know a little bit of a you favorite did. parlay. Get, you get some get the odds juiced up there a little bit so i'm feeling myself so if you don't you mind should. i'd like to start off with the please first pick please i am taking the tampa bay lightning on the puck line against the buffalo sabers might be a little bit of a risky pick here they're coming off a, a an absolute stellar performance uh against the anaheim ducks one yep. six one yeah vasilevsky looked great obviously they, it's the ducks they're the, one of the worst teams in the league right now but nonetheless <laughs> they looked great they were getting goal scoring not from their top guys either it was from the depth scores on the third and fourth line and even right. some zach bogosian hey. gets a goal he gets hey. on the scoreboard so i like <laughs> lightning on the puck line versus the sabers hey, hey, you know what steel we mentioned it on the segment with ian The rest of the Atlantic division is taking note now of what the Toronto Maple Leafs are doing. Kyle Dubas is swinging for the fences, and I don't think he's done yet. So I think you're going to see a big response, both on the ice 
and off the ice in terms of front office moves from the Tampa Bay Lightning and, as we alluded to with Ian, the Boston Bruins as well. And I think the Tampa Bay Lightning realize how critical taking home ice advantage is against this Toronto Maple Leafs team. So I think you're going to be – we should be betting on the Tampa Bay Lightning all the way through to the end of the season. So I'm with you on this take. And also, the Tampa Bay Lightning just have also proved their worth. So don't even think my opinion on them <laughs> is what it is. Just go and look up the numbers. That's it right there. Steel, the other night I think you bet on the National Predators – and they yeah. squeaked out a shootout win against yes, the they did. Canucks. <laughs> and hold on, though, a sec, because I just want to give the Nashville Predators their credit due against the situation they're heading into in San Jose, and that's where I'm headed with my first pick. They have points in nine of the last ten games against the San Jose Sharks, including eight wins. So hit me with the Preds on the money line. Right now, also getting good odds at minus 137. I'm going to take that all day. They are a good team steal in the second half. We've said that at length, and they have six wins out of their last six against the San Jose team. That's my first pick. Yeah, you know, that's definitely going to make the parlay and on the list for myself as well. Thank I was you. looking at that game uh, because of the reason why you said that, you know, nine what points in the last nine, nine of games. 10. Yep. Yeah, so absolutely incredible. Definitely adding that to my parlay list. Second pick of the night. I'm going to take the wild on the puck line against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Ooh, I do this okay. being a little bit of a low scoring game. I think Jonas Corposalo might actually be on the move before the trade deadline because he Ooh. has stepped up. Yes. Fantastically. Yes. Uh, the last few weeks. Good point. I think it, you know, the, the wild have had trouble scoring some goals. I, you know, I believe the last back all the way back till January 16th or 17th, the Wild have only had five players score in each of their games up uh, back of uh, back uh, uh, all the way till January 17th. So haven't been scoring a ton of goals or the yep. same guys are scoring the goals at least, but it's been low scoring game. So I think it's a low scoring game, but I'm taking the Wild on the puck line. I could see this being like a three one or two nothing type of game, uh, but Wild on the puck line. The puck line guru is here to stay for yes. Thursday. So that's my second pick. Interesting point about that lack of production offensively. They've scored 21 goals over their last 10 games, making me think that maybe this wild team takes a little shot at an offensive boost at the trade deadline. Hashtag Brock. Call Besser. Besser. Call yeah. Besser. It's got to happen, Steele. It's just so much like I know the writing's on the wall. Anyway, we're not going to get there. Lots more <laughs> trade deadline coverage in the next eight to 10 days, even reactions after the trade deadline. Locked on fantasy hockey podcast is where you're going to want to be. Anyway, after the plug, Steel, I mentioned the National Predators. I love that spot. We alluded to some of the best aging talents in the game on the episode this past week. Ons Kopitar, hello, on a heater. 14 <laughs> points in his last nine games. Seven goals, seven assists. The Los Angeles Kings are in the top 10 in goals and they're heading into the New Jersey Devils barn where the Devils have allowed a lot of goals over their last couple of games. I said the Devils were going to come out and smoke the Montreal Canadiens the other night. It was the opposite. They got smoked and they have to figure it out, Steele. Yeah. Offensively, they're elite and they're a good team. I like what they have defensively, but they got to tighten the screws. And that's why I think they'll be also making a move. Ons Kopitar, anytime point. That's my second pick of the night. Love that as well. Kopitar has been getting it done. I was watching that Wild Kings game the other day. I was looking at the screen. 20 seconds left. Gustafson going to get a shutout. Nope. Kopitar is there on the Also, hold back. on. I have to interject, not to be rude. What's your take on the silver buckets that the Kings rock? Those shiny silvers? I, I love like them. them. You I don't. don't like them. I, I don't like them whatsoever. I don't like them. I also don't like the Golden Knights chrome buckets as well. I just don't uh, think it's a good I like look. the silvers, though. Anyway, my bad. That's a tangent. What else you got <laughs> for the rest of your bets? I don't I don't know about that flip. I, I don't know about hey, the Let's put up buckets. a poll. I'm, we'll put up a poll on the Twitter account. Side bet who's on the in, poll. Side bet. Who's in favor and who's against <laughs> the chrome buckets for the Vegas Golden Knights and LA Kings? My lock of the night. I'm going to take the Rangers on the money line on the road against the Detroit Red Wings. These are two mm. teams who have been real red hot the last 10 games. Yes. Rangers are 7-1-2 and two in their last 10. Two, uh, you know, they're on a two-game losing streak, but 7-1-2, one, one in overtime. 
and the Detroit Red Wings, who have kind of turned things around as well. They're 7-3-0 and in their last 10 games, coming off a big win against the uh, Washington Capitals as right. well, obviously, who yep. were without Alex Ovechkin at the time. But two teams that are red hot. I'm going to go with the better team in this situation. Rangers on the money line for my lock of the night. This would be one of the situations that I potentially stay away from. I like that you have the cojones to go with it. <laughs> I would also maybe lean, and this is just my gut, maybe lean the under given how good both teams have played. And now these are important games for both teams that are continually getting close to the cutoff, obviously, yeah. Rangers. And, and Red I'm, Wings. I'm always scared to take the under in a, in a Detroit Red Wings game. It usually is over the number. Yeah, and that's true. But lately, maybe not so much. Huso is playing pretty solid hockey. But again, Shesterkin been letting in a lot of goals. So maybe not. So that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say <laughs> is I'm piggybacking on what Steele's point was, I think, with your first pick. The Tampa Bay Lightning have heard the shot called from the Toronto Maple Leafs and they're not going to back down. This team has actually proven over the last number of years in the playoffs, they actually get better when facing adversity. And yeah. now they're, you know, the ball is in their court, at least in the front office. And I think we've also seen them respond already with the crucial part of the schedule and playing well, they're at home against the Buffalo Sabres. Like you mentioned, my lock of the night is the bolts on the money line. Put this in a parlay. Minus 220, you got no money. But how about this for you, Steele? If you want me to just wrap this up with a nice bow. Points, wins for the Tampa Bay Lightning in 9 of 10 games. Their last 10 <laughs> against the Buffalo Sabres. Oh, wait. The Buffalo Sabres have only one win in their last 12 against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And in their last seven trips to Emily Arena, zero points. Zero wins. Tampa Bay blows the doors off this struggling Sabres team. I'm worried about the Sabres steal. This good season could be out of their grasp very quickly here. Yeah, two teams that have a lot to play for. Lightning trying to get home ice advantage. Sabres just trying to make the postseason uh, at all at this point. But they do have a couple of games in hand. And uh, we'll see what happens starting Thursday night against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you go check out Monday through Friday. We are available 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time, available on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform. And again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.